Arr, grog. Hey guys, it's the Sideshow Podcast with me, Peter Fickling, for once. And of course, stalwarts in residence, Kerry Warbis and Matthew Weir. So guys, you let me back here. Yeah. Did you have a nice time away? I did. I did. It's, um, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And I listened to the show. So I was in, I think I, I had your dulcet tones trickling into my ears in various fields up and down our um, up and down our glorious country, mainly in the Midlands. But yeah, it was it, you two did such a good job, and it, it you know it was um, humbling to hear how much happier you were um, without me sort of I don't know, clogging things up. Shall I put the canned laughter track in there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and also you know um, a big thank you to Matthew for his um, sterling editing efforts. Yeah, yeah. You did so well, Matthew. Honestly. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I did went slightly nuts on the second one and just stayed up till three in the morning and edit it, edited it, and sent it out to you guys, which I think you thought I'd lost the plot. But. Yeah, the first the first week with me it was uh, there was a little bit of um, you know airplane me in the control tower talking Matthew down with kind of sweat pouring down his brow, but um, you know after that it was all it was all consummate professionalism. Um, and that's about all I can say for this week's archers. Goodbye. Um, yeah. That, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so uh, oh. we are on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I very nearly crack. I very nearly actually edited like a, a micro version of the whole show just to play as a joke at the beginning. Just like, yeah, there's, I have nothing to say. Oh, uh, Peter. nothing positive anyway. But yeah, that's. Could I just ask you though, when you were in your fields or afterwards, did you listen to the Shula Neil thing where Shula confessed? Because we were worried that you might explode upon hearing that. I list, I have I have listened to every episode of The Archers for many many years until that one I haven't I've yet to listen to it and not and honestly just because I'm trying to summon up the um necessary emotional fortitude um but and the problem was that because and it's because because I'm normally like I listen to it um minutes if I don't listen to it live I listen to it like within 20 minutes of it going up because mm. I'm doing like a chore in the house so I'm never I'm never one of these people who's caught out by social media but for whatever reason, I I was fully aware of the plot before, before I um, but you know before I had a chance to listen. So I know exactly what I'm buckling in for, and it's you know it's quite a tall ask. And ask yourself the question: Do you think you could listen to it if you knew that what what you're going to hear? Um, well, I mean, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when you dared me to not listen in on a particularly ridiculous week, and you and um, Kerry were going to walk me through it? But I, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't resist, and I had to listen in the end. Do you think, as a result of social media and listening? to the podcast um, last week. Do you think you're able to say without doubt what happened in that episode? Uh, yeah, I think I know exactly what happened. Um, I think that Shula went over to, was it Alistair's house? And then, no, no, I, do you know, I don't know what happened at all. I think, I think that she went to Alan and then she said some ill-advised things to Alan. That's why. No, no that's not what happened. You, no, you, were, okay, you were right with Alistair, but you know, she's a sick woman with a broken arm. She didn't go wandering around the village. Alistair came to her and she chose to then reveal that she has got a thing for Neil. Yeah, there was a moment where she, he said something along the lines of, but it is all just gossip, isn't it, Shula? And she's like, I'm in love with. She didn't say I'm in love with him, did she? She said something but like, she... "I think I have feelings for Neil." Yeah. When I was oh, lying there in the field after falling off the horse, I could only think of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if I just complete? I... Did I not listen either? Did any of that happen? It did. She, was it... she said she imagined never seeing him again, and that was okay. just horrific for her, and that it was him she wanted to be with her. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, very serious concussion has occurred here. <laughs> well, I well, I'm glad I don't have to listen to it then. Thank you. And that was a very <laughs> that was a very beautiful reenactment. And um, now that you know, maybe we can have a word with um either Ryan or Susie see if we can get Matthew an audition for an upcoming character. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll open the f***ing fate at this point. <laughs> What fate? I don't want to think about the fate. Yeah, that's that's yes. been. I mean, that that's maybe been my problem with this week has been that the fate was supposed to be a light relief. I mean, obviously, all the all the normal things. Yes, it was incredibly well acted. Yes, it was very moving. Blah 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 blah. But um, but you know, the fate was supposed to be our little bit of sugar to help the medicine go down, and was perhaps the worst part of the week. I mean, it. I mean, I mean, it, there's been some bad pantos. There's been some bad. Uh, village you know activities over the years but this is an, an, another level of tedium it'll all be over after sunday 
So <laughs> we haven't got long to wait now. So. Oh, of course. Yeah. It'll be Sunday, won't it? Yeah. It's a Sunday episode again. When when was the last one? When when did it shift to to four days a week when they came out of well there was the monologues, wasn't there? Nineteen seventy three, so, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, isn't it? It's got to be obviously it has to be over a year since all of that happened, because they had a bit of a lag. Well maybe it's about right actually, because they had a bit of a lag. There's about a three month lag, isn't there? And then then it shifted from six episodes a week to four mm. interesting yeah we'll see and will they be able to make sundays that light-hearted considering how it ended tonight with this macabre kind of scarecrow alice and there's been the mp that has been complained to about the scarecrow problem who are the two antagonists in this it's hillary and audrey yeah they're the ones aren't they mm-hmm and their issue is with the fact that there's a connection between scarecrows and it's yeah. presumably Halloween, but death and black magic. So this is like taking Judas Priest to court because your kids who hated you killed themselves. <laughs> but Alan said that Usha had a mm. she had an associate who had done well in a similar case. So it's like, what similar case is I out know. there? Is this like the Lech Laid on Thames versus the Jack O' Lanterns case of 1974, where they won? And then, or was it the case against Lower Loxley, where do you remember there was a case where like this mummy that Freddie threw into the audience or something terrified everyone? Do you remember that a couple oh, of years ago? The Halloween thing. Was it that? Yeah. Yes. Maybe Hillary or Audrey were present at that, mm-hmm. and that's what spooked them. But I can only think that this scarecrow complaint situation will just be huge publicity for the bloody fate, won't it? You know, it'll be all over the local rags that this MP's got to deal with it. And so crowds will be coming to dunk Alan in the drink. It's very the thick of it, isn't it? Local MP has to deal with this shit rather than <laughs> actually doing what they need to be doing. Yeah. Like helping the homeless and things. And what's the what's the deal with? I mean, is it did Alice leave that um, scarecrow outside the pub as a kind of um, sardonic um, self sort of, I don't know, his piece of self mockery? I think so. Yeah, that kind of. I didn't. I mean, it would be weird for someone else to do it. I mean, I know that she's annoyed a few people, but actually, all the people that she's really annoyed or had a go at aren't are very much not the sort of people to go to that effort or do something so malicious. I was just wondering. All of a sudden, maybe it was Peggy <laughs> who made it. She's she's not got much to do, has she? Well, I did. There was only. I came to the conclusion in the end that it was. It was her, but there was another thing. She was no, like you said, Peter. No one immediately connected to her is going to do that. You know, she's anyone that she's really hurt is either too nice or too understanding to go that far, or she's made some kind of peace with them. But she did mention that she'd been in the bull drinking, hadn't she, recently, when she came home and mm. was absolutely foul to Rory and Jenny, and Jolene had to cut her off. So what if what if there was a kind of a a peripheral character like Kyle, because we know he likes to go in the bull, and maybe he knows he can't get to Helen or this this way through the archers, but he kind of saw Alice making a tit of herself, mm. and he's done this just to kind of do it from a distance. Even drunk Alice has got better taste than to to knock boots with Kyle. Oh, I don't. I'm not saying they knock boots, or you just think he's a spiteful man who would lo- look yeah. for any opportunity to have a go at that family. Yeah, and he's witnessed. He's seen what happened, and he always saw her in there making a bit of a scene. Probably asked who she, who's that, found the connection, and just decided to do that in the. I mean, who could be asked to make a scarecrow and and find a dress that's like one that. Um, Alice wears and yeah, and then drink seven bottles of wine to leave scattered around. <laughs> yeah, only Alice could do that. Yeah, that's the bit that brought me round to thinking it's Alice. Is that it's because Harrison was like, "Oh, I've seen her wear a dress like that." And I was like, "Well, it's probably Alice then, isn't it?" <laughs> and she's probably she's downed the bottles herself, mm. just to just to be you know to go to get into character. Yeah, I mean, okay, where do you two think Alice is? I think she's like one of these people that sits on their lantern, um, sits on their lantern. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. Sits on their porch at Halloween 
and as a as a static oh. scarecrow and then i reckon she's inside the scarecrow outside i think she's got a bit dressed oh. up she's got into a bit of a mess and that's her and she's actually still sleeping it is actually and they're all <laughs> And they're all just, and she's like had a roll around in the hair. He got into a bit of a mess, mm. and Harrison's there because I mean Harrison, he's not really the most intuitive cop, is it? He's probably there going, "It looks like Alice, and I've seen her wear a dress like that." It's like, you know, it just takes someone with a good set of eyes to come up and go, "Oh, that is Alice." Yeah, actually, me. actually, just her hair's slightly messy, so they just think it's a scarecrow straight away. Harrison, mate, you've arrested another scarecrow. Take it back to the field. <laughs> you know, how many times? He was very community-minded of him to go around and do the litter duty, though, wasn't it? I thought that was nice of him. Um, do you know you you know someone who owns a litter hoop and litter picker, both of you? I'll just say that. Uh, well, is it a very expensive one? <laughs> <laughs> Does it have different temperatures? No, it was a uh, well-sourced, well-sourced, and well-researched. And did you buy it off a bunch of bunch of fundamentalist Christians who live up in the ne- Nebraska mountains, believing the end of the world is coming? I feel very personally attacked. Mm-hmm. Um, I just hope this conversation doesn't go any further. Um, I no, I did particularly I, if you're listening, Brad. Big fans. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brad's a very nice guy. I I um I saw this mother in the park, and she was she was taking her kid litter picking, and I thought this is this is very much the sort of thing I want to do with my son. So I I I, I, I bought Aww. a litter picker. It has never been used. Oh dear! When you said I saw this mother in the park, I thought you were talking about a bloke. Like, yeah, I thought you were going into like. Um, gang. I thought you were going to go up to him, gay. Hey, yeah. Which gang? Which gang set are you repping, your mother? Yeah. Or in my in my park. Or that he dropped he dropped a crisp packet, and you went. I saw this mother <laughs> dropping a crisp yeah. packet, and I ran at him with my hoop. It could be quite a good stealth weapon. It's you know, it's it's four or five feet of sturdy litter picker. So I mean, if you wanted to be like a kind of a a, a kind of a. a, a a stealth vigilante then it would be mm-hmm. a very good tool to carry so um yeah maybe that might be the only time i ever use it but uh, sorry <laughs> so harrison's a terrible cop alice is alice is trapped inside her own own little personal wicker man mm. um and um poor jenny's at home wondering where her baby girl is i mean it, i mean that was i mean kerry and i were talking earlier on and i just i think you you showed a level of empathy and sort of um care that i just haven't been able to muster kerry but you you immediately pointed to the kind of the real star of this week and that's that's kerry i mean it's not kerry. yeah the real star of this week <laughs> is kerry but is also jenny <laughs> i'm always pointing at myself and saying this is the real star guys um yeah i did think jenny dealt with things very well bless her she was she was put through the ringer wasn't she and um, and Brian really took a back step with all of that. Although I loved Brian when he was having a go at Alice, and I agreed with everything he was saying. Yeah, and he sounded very beaten up today, didn't he? Very, very yeah. sort of hurt. Yeah, he he was very um when he was he was dropping those truth bombs to to Alice through really gritted teeth of rage, wasn't he? At one point. And when she said, Dad, please don't be too hard on me. And he's like, what? Is that a joke? Uh, the real um, haymaker was when he said that Jen is a much better, mo- proved to be a much better mother than you've been so far. Mm. That was a real, that was the real um, yeah. stinger, wasn't it? Yeah. But Jenny, obviously, she slapped. Alice, didn't she? And it it sounded like a twig breaking, by the way. It didn't really sound to me like a proper clout around the jawline. Yeah, I, I thought it was a little kick to the shin. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I'm, I'm a bit intrigued, really, about what you two think about the slapping incident. Do you think, yay, well done, Jenny, you've slapped her? Or are you like, oh, I wish you hadn't done that? I, I was. It made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I. I mean, it, it's an act of desperation. I can't mm. sort of. I can't imagine how hurt you must feel to do that. Mm. She regretted it. I thought she would, because she's Jenny. I mean, no one would like to th- hit their child like that, no matter what the circumstances, really. But yeah, that moment when she said, "I've never hit any of my children," I was expecting Brian to go, "What? Not even Adam?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always hitting him. Mm. It was an interesting one because Twitter was split. Loads of people like, about time, you at last, hooray, really, really loving that she'd smacked around the chops. I I didn't celebrate that. Oh, no, I think I might have been party to that. 
<laughs> or at least I might have just typed slap in capitals. Um, but I could see it coming because mm. you could see that I was worried and I know it's just so out of character and it would have been a real curveball. I was worried Rory was going to do something physical at that moment because she was saying horrible things about Siobhan. You know, your grieve, whining and sobbing about your dead mother. And I was like, oh. that might be the moment where he breaks. But yeah. he didn't. To his, to his credit, he didn't. But and it ended up being Jenny. He's been solid gold throughout this whole thing. Yep, he's, uh, he's well, what, how, let's get into it. How wonderful is Rory? Well, you know, he even got three A stars, despite no one in his family liking him, you know. <laughs> yeah, I liked his his moment afterwards where, you know, Ben said something along the lines of, you know, well, you, you weren't sure. And he was just like, I was never in doubt, actually. You know, <laughs> he put his sunglasses on, lit a cigarette. Goodbye, Ambridge. Yeah. Peter, what did you think about that? Well, I mean, good for him. He's now going to be Jimmy somerville his way down to London. Um, small town boy blazing in his ears. As you know, uh, although he doesn't have any of the complications, you know, in the song, but um, no, I, I, th- I thought he, I thought he was absolutely triumphant all week, and mm. and you know, I mean, it's, it's as is always the case with the archers, they, you know, they love to have that kind of counterpoint, don't they? Sort of, so um, in order to sort of have Alice's actions be as vile as possible, Rory is there as the kind of uh, mm. exemplar of everything, you know, everything that's the opposite, you know, to the harsh juxtaposition. I mean, he was so graceful under fire. You, you know, the acting was brilliant. It was very moving. Um, and also the scene with him and um, Jenny at the station as well. That was that was that was heartbreaking. It was to hear, it, to I, hear how upset she was. Yeah, I think that that was played very very well, wasn't it? That was uh, on Wednesday. You know, the point at which she sort of went, "I love you." It was all very convincing. There was one bit there that did make me laugh. I'm so sorry, but it was when she went, um, "I think you might be the best one, frankly." <laughs> yeah, he is. What, you know, out of the children, out of all of us. And I thought, I was thinking out of the soap opera almost probably. <laughs> yeah, I, this is, this is, a, this is a, maybe not the time to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Time to out myself as I don't really like Debbie either. Oh, no. yeah. Like, I mean, I don't, I'm not sort of anti Debbie, mm. but like, you know, Adam, I'm not a fan. Uh, Kate, Kate actually might be my favorite, but, um, you know, but that's pure entertainment. Like as a person, obviously she's abhorrent, but as, as people pretty much none of them, none of the mm. Aldridges really do it for me apart from, um, Brian and, and Rory. But you wouldn't say that to one of the kids, would you? You wouldn't say you're the best one, surely. No. I found that odd. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, you, you, uh, I've said it so many times ago, you're, you're, you know, you're a, a lot more dedicated to kind of like it, it being real. And I think I sort <laughs> of, I, I, I think I just immediately go, oh yeah, of course it's the archers. I think I've got the kind mm. of got that rotating in my head the whole time. That thought. I ought to adopt that a lot more. It might, it might save you. A, it might save you a certain <laughs> amount of stress, but then, but then equally, I think that, that maybe you were protected this week because you have that kind of perhaps sort of more um, emotional involvement in some of the characters. Sometimes, I mean, not all of them. I know that you can be as sort of psychotic as as the next person yeah. when it comes to you know um, Adam or a few other people. Mm. But like you, you like I was saying earlier, you were instantly feeling all that empathy for. for um, for Jenny and I was I was too busy being selfish and pissed off that my kind of you know my my fun week with the Grundies and Jim had been you know <laughs> yet again ruined by another trip to Aliceville. Yeah, I yeah I'm a well-rounded character <laughs> of um, loving things and hating things at the same time. Um, I just think poor Jenny desperately, genuinely does love Rory and has done brilliant things for him and I liked that his responses at the train station were you know you've been like a proper mum and you did make it better that yeah. that line you did make it better was the belter for me uh, I was desperate for him to say something like that I because because mm. I yeah I mean I've got a lot of steps and halves in my in my family mm. and, you know it's 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 complicated isn't it you sort of you know they are your brothers and sisters i was i'm just yearning for him to to, to give jenny a, a a little bit of you know something to hang on to mm. yeah and the beginnings of that were sowed last week weren't they when jenny and brian had their post cluedo conversation about rory's coming out he pretty much said you know 
he, he's the best one of the lot. We did the best job with him as opposed to the others. So I think there was a little bit of that in in Jenny's mind. Also, it was spurred on by the uh, the emotional roller coaster of that situation, you know, that he's going, all right, you're going to Ireland. How long are you going for? Well, until I start uni. And that was when she started listing all those plans that she'd oh, had. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we're going to take you out to a really fancy restaurant where they serve champagne. And I was like, I think they serve champagne in Weatherspoons, Jen. <laughs> like, don't get don't get too carried away. Yeah, she, she's really fallen, hasn't she? She's, got, she's well into her new life. I mean, before there was probably a, a specific champagne fridge and now it's a kind of like, you know, <laughs> pale as a... Hey, that was street. that was in her old kitchen, though, wasn't it? I mean, at one point, it's funny that she didn't actually manage to circle back to moaning about her bloody kitchen in all of this mm. as well. You know, but maybe he would have stayed, Brian, if only we had that smeg fridge <laughs> where I where I offered him that biscuit when I first met him in the other kitchen. She did mention the old kitchen. I remember it in the kitchen. I gave him a biscuit. Oh, yes, she bloody did. She, she? did. She, yeah, she's a one. She she can't stop going on about it, but. Also, she she said about um, I was going to take you to the tennis club. Like, what tennis club? I've never heard of this t- tennis club. And a boat on the river. Has anyone done that? Mm, I don't know. The Aldridges in the river, they don't have the best history, do they? I don't <laughs> think it would have been a top idea. Mm. I mean, but if you care that much, I mean, first of all, she gets that surprise. I'm, su- I'm su- surprised you managed to get a flight to Ireland only yesterday. I was like, well, Ryanair does have four flights out of Birmingham a day going to Dublin. And the other thing is, you're in Am- um, Ambridge. Drive him to the bloody airport. Why is he taking the train to Sullyhull or wherever? Oh. You know, they, they, could, they could have got him there in 40 minutes to Birmingham. Seems very strange. Maybe, maybe it's one of those little trains that you see along the seafront. You know, it's not really a train. It sort of just goes about 200 yards to the airport. Yeah, around the shopping mall and then back. <laughs> oh, hey, Rory. Ireland's actually the name of another village. <laughs> turns, out, like yeah. two valleys across. <laughs> turns out you're not so bright after all. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought of that. So, yeah, we'll, how, so he's going to disappear to Ireland and then disappear to uni. So that's it for Rory for a while is he is he got a gig elsewhere do you think I think he's got he's got his three A stars hasn't he he's going to get you yeah. know it's going to be uh, um, the, the universe actor, his choice yeah I was going to say <laughs> Kerry thinks like you're talking about the actor aren't you like not being in the show yeah I think I think he's gone for a while I reckon we might have Rory down the phone like Amy unfortunately mm. like and I tweeted out this week that Rory's gain will be our loss and I think that's true sorry just actors actors <laughs> uh, oh yeah i don't know if, if you ever you know, act, that that's right we don't peter doesn't want to see behind the curtain kerry yeah that was a very that, i mean with that when, when susie turned up that was a hell of a shock i still haven't you know quite recovered from that <laughs> that bloody voice she put on all the way through as well that really put me off <laughs> kudos kudos to the two of you for your bitter rant about someone having a <laughs> it um, it was not bitter having guests on the on the on the show. Yeah, that was me. I I couldn't help it. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. you're going full. You know, going full um, a Norwegian commentator. And another thing, yeah. and this day, I and I did come back to it right at the end as well. So you know, I was ju- I was just as guilty. I was oh, very, I was proud of you both. I thought I was you know I, okay. I I was jealous that I was I couldn't be involved in that conversation. <laughs> this week. Um, I'm going to mention that someone said that I don't speak loudly enough or have my mouth close enough to the microphone. I must tell that person, thank you for that, honestly. Um, but my lips are literally touching the microphone at all times throughout it's bad this recording. I don't, yeah, I Kara is kind of the velvet, as we said before, the velvet voice DJ in the fog. She's right up against the microphone. Oh, yeah. This is is going out to all you fishermen out there. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry if you do have trouble hearing me, but it might be a blessing, love. And I mean, it says something about Matthew and my um, sort of insecurities that both of us kind of um, uh, try and extend the reach of the patriarchy by squashing Kerry through using the volume level. Of the volume control <laughs> yeah, I turn, I just, <laughs> that's the awkward thing I did admit. I just turned Kerry right down. <laughs> yeah, so. Ooh, funny buggers. Yeah, so mm. none of us care about the fate necessarily. No, mm. I did. Oh, sorry, but, 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 I mean, are we sure that Matthew doesn't? Uh, no. Good point. Am I the? 
Linda organizing the books. So someone they've had five copies of Fifty Shades of Grey. Am I right? So that's I mean that's two hundred and fifty shades of grey, isn't it? Really, if they do the math. <laughs> um, and she's organizing the books into classic detective, contemporary, and I presume now soft wanks as well. Mm. So I don't know how they're gonna how they're gonna organize all of this. They've also got this dunk the vicar, and then the the contentious scarecrow thing. Have I missed anything yes, else? Yes, the cow shitting in squares. Oh, yes, yeah. Cow pat roulette. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Oh, and Joy's going to do tarot or fortune telling? No, she was just checking the fortune telling tent, which had oh. been attacked by, was it mice? Mice. Yeah. I'm so disappointed. I thought Joy was going to actually do the tarot or the fortune telling. I mean, tarot. she might do, but they didn't actually specifically say that. Yeah. This is the death card, which reminds <laughs> me, there was a baton twirling story about death once. <laughs> That would be. I would actually look forward to listening to Joy having each bloody character coming into her tent and her sort of saying what their future holds. I would listen to that happily. Yeah, talking to Tony. I see you. You're on a train track. There's a big train coming, but you can't move. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, there's a Geordie woman tugging at you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I would like... <laughs> Is if maybe the fortune teller, sorry, the, yeah, the the fortune teller gets attacked by the mice herself towards just before the fate, and Joy has to step in because she stood in for the cowardly Lee when he wouldn't get his uh, mm. his his action man bits out for the crowd at lower, the life the life drawing class at Lower Loxley. True. So why can't she stand in for the fortune teller? Well, maybe she will. Maybe she will. Hey, if there are five lots of Fifty Shades of Grey in such a small amount of you know locals what does that say about life there considering that is a dreadful dreadful book have you read it Kerry no I've read excerpts of it at the time I wouldn't go near such a thing I just it was the writing was appalling quite apart from whether it turns you on or not isn't it like zany clothing like people with no personality mm -hmm. wear zany clothing like you know so flair to try and sort of suggest that they have kind of hidden depths that aren't there like if you are terrible at sex and just like have no sort of sexual imagination then yeah. you need to read erotica i mean so this you know why i don't know anyway, maybe i'm being yeah. unfair but is I just, it like the simpsons socks of literature Yes, yes, exactly. It's like you said, you know, you know, you can't. It, it, you, you, you know, you're making love through a hole in the sheet. So you, you know, so you, you have all your your your, your hijinks in a rather tedious, well thumbed book that you've got from the free, you know, from the mini library in the old um telephone box. Mm, I think it's a heinous novel. Yeah, I, I mean, some people have. I haven't read it. I haven't seen the movie. Um, just something it's not remotely interested in, but. It, some people find it quite problematic, don't they? Oh, yeah, 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 because the guy was just basically a bit of a sadist. I've seen, I've seen endless memes with that, the two shots of him saying, like, my tastes are unconventional, and then but the second part of the meme is just always something ridiculous, like Pokemon Go or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, the archers, I, listener. Yeah, the art, that's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we're doing for the meme this weekend. Yeah. So who are the five owners of the book? Who, who, who mm. are the, I mean, many people might have read it, but who are the five original purchasers then? So we're going with Helen Molly, is, Helen's one. Adam. Adam's one, Molly Button. <laughs> Adam. Adam, yeah, definitely. Adam, Helen, oh, do Molly you know, Button. Sad to say, do you think Tracy would read that sort of trash yes, and go, oh, 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 even though she's having quite good sex? She's, she, she might be the exception to my rule. You know, who, who she, might read it? Tracy. Tracy. Tracy might. Don't think Joy might read it? She might have popped it in. <laughs> Not the book, I mean. I don't think Tracy would buy it new. I think Tracy would buy it, you know, on whim because it's on sale sort of post-Christmas. Yeah. Or her um, mate gave it to her. Or something. Exactly. Yeah. Surely Adam would read Fifty Shades of Hay. Mm. <laughs> there we go. There's the there's the Matthew I know and love. The... <laughs> yeah. Oh, Susan would read it. I bet you. Do, no. Do you not think she'd be a bit too prudish? And also, she's got a corking. She's got a cracking sex life. Her and Neil. Well, she no, used to. Not. Her and yeah, Neil used yeah. to go at hammers and tongs. Yeah, they're probably all five of those copies are Susan's. <laughs> She'll probably come back from. <laughs> I'm not getting any at home, so I've just thought I'd get a, mm. get this copy back for a while. Would Shula read Fifty Shades of Grey? Mm. 
Well, what, what, we're learning a lot about her, aren't we? Is it Fifty Shades of Beige in brackets cardigan? <laughs> See, I'll be kinder, Kerry, and I'll laugh at your joke, even though you didn't laugh at my Adam one. Sorry, darling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. I know it was shit. It didn't deserve it. It was any laugh. really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was worse. It could have been 50 bales of hay. It's, yeah, I'm just sorry. I'm still stuck on it. Just like suddenly I've been sort of paralyzed with the thought of sort of Shula and her sex life and what she might like, what she might be in like in bed. Is there any chance at all that Shula's actually amazing between the sheets? And I have to say, no. Um, no well, she was considered to be something of a babe, though, wasn't she? Doesn't mean her... anything, does it? No, it that doesn't. doesn't mean, that means absolutely nothing. True. But I do, I think you're, you're, you're touching on something that's quite correct there, Kerry, is that. I I always forget that I think she is meant to be seen even, you know, as she's got slightly older, to be an attractive female character in The Archers. And I don't see her like that in any way at mm. all. I find her this kind of pottering, bumbling um, pain in the arse, basically, who seems to be slightly self-important. I had a conversation with slightly. somebody else this week. Oh, I had this conversation with another listener this week mm. and they said, what have you got against Shula? And I listed all of those things and she went, no, she's just, she's a good egg, basically. Oh. She's not interesting, but she's kind of harmless. And I was like, no, yeah. she makes everything about herself as far as I can see. She, she, she is the she is the physical manifestation of the phrase, the banality of evil. Um, yeah. She is, you know, all it takes for all it takes for evil to triumph is people like Shula just to carry on with their sort of blinkered lives. Sorry. Mm. I mean, you know, yeah, all, all ill in the world is Shula's fault. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> anything else, Peter? I, I don't, I mean, all, you know, all joking apart, I mean, I don't really dislike Shula that much. I just, I mean, as I've said, I've said many, many times in real life, she's exactly who you'd want living next to you or down the street. She'd, you know, oh, she'd sort, God, of, sort you out for a cup of sugar and all that sort of stuff. It's just, in my silly little show that I listen to, that I, you know, the the the, the one the one the hour and a bit of entertainment I have a week, I just don't have space in my heart for Shula, uh, and so I resent her in a sort of very childish and sort of disproportionately large way. But then it's, just, you know, I just you know, so when someone when someone confronts me with their logic and it's like, oh, why do you dislike Shula so much? It's like, well, why do you treat archers like it's the archers like it's real life? Why do you why do you waste an hour and a half of your life pretending these people are real? It's a pantomime. It's silly, and so my reactions can be pantomime and silly as well. Yeah, and let let's not forget she's training to be a a vicar, the ordination thing, and is lusting after a married bloke. Even Christians. Even Christians sometimes are a bit suspicious of vicars. There's something weird about wanting to be a vicar. Yeah. Is it the same as being a politician, that sort of thing, where it's like, yeah, oh, exactly. your ego's a bit weird? I mean, I've I've known some nice vicars in my time, and I can, you know, and I've known some nice people who want to be vicars, but I think there is, there is something, mm. it's a bit like being a policeman, wanting to do something which in a large part involves putting your nose into other people's business. Mm requires a certain amount of it's 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 a it's a desire for power is weird i think so to those of us who are quite happy just you know struggling getting on with our own lives whereas others would say that those very professions we've just listed are all about helping others <laughs> wouldn't they it, well when yeah. i was when i was having a very happy wee through a sign on, uh, on the curzon cinema in um in central london and, and you know i didn't feel very helped by that policeman he did nothing to help. He was very ruined the whole thing for me. Thank you very much, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, she's a funny one, isn't she? She wasn't even in this week. I don't know why we're talking about her. I, I did enjoy the whole Alan already having the inside track on Linda thinking that she was the celebrity and he just mm. tiptoed around it, the whole thing. Which, well, don't you think your A-lister would be upset? Yeah. If we asked this other person to come in, because um, Lillian had a word. What was it she said? She wouldn't want her to to, to go down like a leaky lila. Oh, yeah, on a, <laughs> on a Sunday. Why on yeah, a Sunday? which I thought was a bit strange that she used that, because if you remember, one of the things she did to help out was Lillian took round a load of boner pills to help Robert, wasn't it? So maybe she oh, was kind yeah. of thinking that, re cause that really upset Linda, didn't it? Yeah. And well, I, that was her trying to help, and it mm. didn't help in the slightest. What I didn't understand about the Alan knowing that Linda is, you know, the MBE superstar, and then sort of 
him going, actually, this acquaintance of Usha is very interesting, was that there was only Alan and Linda talking to each other, but but they kept saying, you know who, and not revealing the name of it when there's only them two talking. Are we suspecting it's someone in legal circles? No, but why weren't they just saying who it was between the two of them? I... Because they don't want us to bloody know. That's why. No, but that's just that wouldn't f-ing happen, though, would it? There was no one else there. No, and we've tried to keep guests that are coming on the show under wraps, and then Peter just shoots his bolt, and goes, "Oh, by the way, next week we're having." Have I done that? No, you haven't. But behind closed doors, you've been like can't keep it in any longer we're gonna have to say something so we always let it out so i think it's quite ridiculous yeah that they would behind closed doors they wouldn't name it exactly for our benefit aren't they but no peter you're you're not guilty i know but just kidding if that's a script between two people who are on their own that wouldn't have been what they would say no i guess not but it's like those movies where you have a twist isn't it and then therefore you're never able to see those characters directly divulge what the twist or who the twist is going to be yeah that's fine editing is different isn't it you know i mean did did any of you think that bruce willis wasn't dead within the first five minutes of the sixth sense i sussed hello. it out hello like, i'm very gullible I, I didn't work it out till right <laughs> at the end. i just kept reading about they have a twist that has made audiences in this in america rush straight back in the cinema to watch the first thing in the movie and i was like watching it i was like right he gets shot by a house intruder in the first two mm-hmm. minutes and then for the whole remainder of the movie, no one directly looks or speaks at him exactly. apart from this one kid. Yeah. I was like, he's dead. The same people <laughs> who were surprised by that read Fifty Shades of Grey and think it's good, don't they? Is Fifty Shades of Grey the erotica equivalent of... Dan Brown's... Uh, Ex- thank you, Kerry, because I'd, for- yeah. I'd forgotten the name of the book. Da Vinci Code, yep. Yes, because Lee, Lee is claimed to be a big... He's got one book and it's the Da Vinci Code, isn't it? We've had that from the yeah from the from the actor's mouth. So maybe I don't know. That's why I thought Helen was a was a real shoe in for Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh yeah, it could be right. Sorry, I mean if we're offending anyone who's read Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> I mean if you've if you've rubbed one out to that piece of trash, do, fair play. Do email us. <laughs> it would be very ironic if you can wade through a sort of a, a great big slab of S and M role playing and then suddenly be offended by three middle aged goobers. <laughs> 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 on an archer's podcast i yeah. mean that's a that's a strange one, yeah one mm. star i used to enjoy this irreverent <laughs> podcast but since they slagged off my favorite book one, yeah yeah <laughs> flicking one off to 50 shades of gray i can no longer be bothered to listen to them big marbles fan that's what um, matthew was referring to there um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> of course um, or conquers but i you know but i you know i yeah it's it's irritating when it's irritating when you see, can see the script writing isn't it i mean that's the that's the point isn't it Kerry? Mm. with the with the with the whole it's just like come on guys you i'd almost rather the script writer just sort of broke the fourth wall and went hello it's me mm. look it's very late on a thursday night <laughs> i've got to hand this in tomorrow morning i'm um you know i've come home from the pub i'm drunk so yeah it's going down like this <laughs> anyway on with the show. But, but I think we... It's, go on, Kerry. It kind of stood out because I thought the rest of the week's um, episodes were really well written. I thought Jenny was really well written. Brian, Alice, you know, some of the stuff that Alice was saying, incredible. Um, Rory, wonderful. The fate stuff drifted by me a bit because I'm not that interested. But um, generally speaking, I thought it was really well written this week. So that just made me go, what? <laughs> and she, and she, Kerry, I, I, you just made me think. I said some nice things about um, Brian, that how moving it was to hear. Mm. And Brian was obviously very affected. Mm. Do you, uh, you know, because given that you're the person who feel, I feel, is sort of had got the most out of this week. Do you, do you, did you feel that way about Brian? Did you sort of, because I would have thought you would have, I he really shone this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tweeted about it um, or him, and. You know, I, I basically think I think I said something like um, all the words that he's saying are, are absolutely correct, aren't they? I, well, I felt they were what he was saying to her chimed with what we were probably all thinking. Yeah. Um, but what about the sort of the stuff today where he was sort of he was very he felt he sounded very low. He sounded very kind of cowed and sort of he lacked Brian's kind of normal bounce and energy, I felt. 
Can you remind me about what that was? Because on a th the Thursday one, when I'm doing the tweet along and then have to jump into this, I don't take in as much. What, oh, what, okay. what, well, what was who? You was might it? enjoy. You might enjoy the readers, Matthew. You, yeah. You, do, you, do you have a? You, you listened to it most recently. Well, what, what would? How would you describe it? He sounded a, a, like he it had really taken its toll on him. This whole thing during the week, hadn't it? Because we found out first of all that when he had it out with Alice, he he seemed to have known what Alice had said about Rory, but he Jenny had obviously spared him his blushes oh, yeah. about what she'd said to him. Mm. And then tonight it was just, it seemed to be him trying to work, but his heart wasn't in it and trying to be at home. And he was preoccupied with that. There was that thing about, you know, Jenny was like, Oh, I'll take Alice up breakfast. And he was like, it's two thirty. How much of a session did mm -hmm. she have last night? And there was just that moment where he didn't take, he felt he didn't take the coming out that well. Oh, uh, yeah. And he said, I, I didn't put the marching, put the, put out the flags in the marching band. Oh. And I suddenly had like Brian just inappropriately <laughs> thinking he was doing the right thing and like organizing an entire pride festival <laughs> on the village green for Rory coming out as bisexual and just yeah. making a complete hash of it. So there was that. Cause first of all, I thought, what the news he's going to Ireland. <laughs> and then it was like, Oh yeah, that week, because it, it, was, it was like not a big deal at all. Was it? No. Um, so he blamed himself a bit for that. You've just reminded me as well of something that Jenny said to him which was yeah I can remember him being weary now because Jennifer said maybe what we've got to do is just let Alice sort of combust basically wasn't it just let her go and just self-destruct and uh, I can remember Brian sort of going what really and she was like well yeah you know we're, we're, we're trying, aren't we? Everything, it's not working. Maybe that's the route that has to happen. Yeah, and, and, and obviously, Kerry, you're the you're the one with the adult children. I, I, I sort of, one of the things I've maybe, maybe only just thought about is it should, you know, that could have been a, Rory leaving home under normal, normal circumstances mm. without anything else going on. That could be enough to completely absorb a parent mm. um, going off to university, moving through to another chapter of their life. I mean, surely that's enough to just... So I hadn't really thought about, I hadn't really shown enough empathy, but like, yeah, just, you know, to his, this, and also this week when they're supposed to be glorying in their son's achievements, yeah. they're still so wildly distracted by Alice. Yeah. Um, that was very, very poignant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, there were some people worrying about Brian really that he, how upset. And I thought some of his, like you said, Kerry, some of the things he threw back in Alice's face, completely justified mm. and delivered like a boss as well. Yeah. But by tonight, I felt it. He felt like he was really struggling with it all. Mm. Oh, you'd be you'd be absolutely crushed having to say it, though, wouldn't you? I mean, it would just be <laughs> awful to have have to. I mean, yeah. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny literally slapped her, and then Brian did it. You know, uh, with words. Mm. So both of them, both of them have had to deal with that guilt, no matter how earned it was to. To have to strike, you have to lash out at your child like yeah. that must be, must be awful. There was a point where Jenny said to Rory, I can remember her saying something like, well, of course, your father was totally useless. Um, that was to do with her saying, I had to speak to someone about the Siobhan CD. Uh, of course, your father was absolutely useless. And I thought, oh, God, that's sad, isn't it? I did. I did wonder why he, why she didn't just say, "Look, Rory, that you know these two things can coexist at the same time." I can a hundred percent appreciate Siobhan as a mother, mm. and I can a hundred percent appreciate your love for her, and I can be a hundred percent grateful for her gift of you to my life. But also at the same time, not be the biggest fan mm -hmm. of the fact that she made the beast with two backs with my husband for a year and a half. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And there was, I think it was just a little. Um, little look back because brian handled it handled it terribly didn't he the cd he threw a complete wobbler mm. and it was jenny that had to take him out of the equation yeah sit down and listen it because he was almost like she's causing disruption in this family from beyond the grave i was like brian <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> you know he just completely lost it i think maybe it really threw him as well. Yeah, he was Didn't not I mean, expecting I, that CD from no, the grave. I thought it would have been great. I really thought it would have been great if Rory would just put the CD in. It was like some early 90s happy hardcore bangers that she thought he would like. <laughs> but unfortunately, it was just like this long, lovely message mm -hmm. from his mother. But yeah, I think it was a bit of a callback to just how crap 
um, and as hopeless, I think it was, or useless as Jenny said yeah. that he handled it. So poor Jenny, she, as I said earlier, she's been through the ringer with all of this and it's come out rather well, I think, this week. Yeah. Then that's a kind of a, a maybe a neat summation of our experience as well, mm. Kerry. Um, you know, dealing with. I certainly I went through the ringer this this. Uh, what personally this or just with the show? <laughs> <laughs> this last fifty minutes, to be honest. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It was a hard, it was is we keep saying this, don't we? But it was a. It's tough. They're giving us tough work, I think, with these episodes because they're. They are either very heavy. I mean, maybe this is the way the script writing is going, but who knows? On yeah. a lighter note, why was Fallon making a scarecrow that's called Vincent from... Was it Vincent from Pulp Fiction? Oh. Yeah, Vincent Vega. I mean, yeah. what? Just nonsense. And that's Robert's one of Robert's favourite movies, apparently. Oh, I missed that bit. Yeah, Linda, Linda said that's one of Robert's favourite flicks. All parts of my life, I'm never getting back. That whole, that whole scarecrow, <laughs> that whole nonsense. Mm-hmm. I find that hard to believe that Robert likes Pulp Fiction. Yeah, I reckon she's got her wires crossed there. <laughs> yeah, what, what can it be instead? Do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Mulch fiction with Alan Titchmarsh or something. Or kind of like a guide to um, you know, firm composting or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> um, Mm. so do you do you um i mean i'm i'm running out of i'm running out of things to say about this week i'm sort of uh, i I feel like it's it would be unfair to inflict more of my whining on the world have you guys got any 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 extra thoughts to see us out no i haven't really no i think that's that's everything pretty much covered isn't it yeah i i mean i it's great to be back on the pod with my two dear friends um, and I, I am looking forward to it. And I, I, I know I have whined a bit today, but I do, you know, I do love the arches. It's more, it's good. I mean, maybe I feel like Brian. I feel let down and disappointed by my, 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 you know, my, by my loved one, by, by Ambridge. And so maybe that's why I'm so sort of laid low. So sorry, maybe, maybe hopefully they'll give us something a bit more sort of buoyant for next week. Although Kerry, you sounded very, very fine with the whole thing. So you know, that's. Maybe that's you, yeah. you're a good you, you you've leavened the whole thing. If I can eradicate the fate, that's fine. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm getting so I'm um I'm um cosmic ordering the whole Alice plot away. You're getting rid of the fate. Yeah. There's not gonna be much left, is there? <laughs> It'll just be Matthew and Fallon left. I'm up for that. <laughs> oh, I bet you would be, yes. Oh yeah, that's the party yeah. boy. Yeah, if if you could um if you could uh, do a oh god what's the what's his name well who's that Norwegian singer take on me um uh, Morten Harkett yeah I was gonna say if you could Morten Harkett your way into the into Ambridge and and run around being chased you know with um Fallon that's a very laboured comparison sorry <laughs> it is it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you know I'm as a punishment to myself I'm not going to edit that out good I'm going to leave that dross in yeah so that you know um that uh, you know just to just to remind myself about how boring I can be. Um, so if people want to email in to tell me how dull I am, <laughs> they can do it. <laughs> hello at the cider shed. Um, do, um, hello at the, no, hello at the cider shed.com. Um, Twitter, Kerry, what's, what's that? What's the Twitter handle? It is before I say what it is, weren't Dross a band mentioned in the arches? You said Dross then, and it made me think that I'm sure there was a band. In that, the was, that, was a gr- that was a grunge band that Fallon, <laughs> Ed, and I think, think jazz it was jazz oh, maybe brother in the band i don't know jazz or jazz I think, jazz, brother or I think jazz was in it for like a five minutes and then dropped out because he had something better to do <laughs> ketamine yeah. yeah or cleaning his oven or something anything uh yeah sorry twitter yes it at the cider shed pod is where you'll find us on twitter it's a right laugh on there come along and join in and on Facebook, we're at the Cider Shed Podcast. And on Instagram, we are the Cider Shed Pod, just like we are on um, Twitter. Thank you very much for listening, as always. Um, it's really lovely to be back, as I just said. Um, thank you so much, guys, for letting me have my little holiday. It was um, very enjoyable. And, uh, yeah, um, I'll, I'll, see you, I'll see you next week. I'm off next week. Oh. I, I'm on a holiday. I've got so, my hell. So good luck, boys, with each other. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Matthew. Matthew knows. Matthew knows because he's done an edit now. But the kings of talking over each other are going to be going <laughs> toe to toe for fifty minutes solid. Good luck, audience. <laughs>
Oh, well, it'll be interesting to see the, the, the calamitous crash in audience numbers for, That'd be dark. Um, for next week. No, me, me and Peter have got some very interesting things, some new features for the show oh, lined thanks. up next week. <laughs> so, so, yeah, if you want to call in. Okay. Uh, Kerry, you can call in. I don't mean the listeners. We're not going to do that. Okay. Yeah, I might call in from my hotel. Yeah, so that'll be it. Me and Matthew, look forward to that. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. See you in two weeks. <laughs> Hang on.